Romans. Uh, thank you for joining us for Local Author Day. Uh, Miguel Lopez de Leon is an award-winning author of several YA middle grade and dark fantasy novels. His debut YA fantasy, Galadria, Peter Huddleston, and the Rites of Passage was listed as one of the best books of 2014 by Kirkus. Uh, since the Galadria trilogy, uh, Miguel has written six more fantasy novels, the most recent being It Took Billy, which he will be presenting today. Uh, it also won a 2018 to 2019 Reader Views Literary Award and the 2019 Eric Hoffer Book Award. Uh, in the categories of horror and commercial fiction. And with that said, please join me in welcoming Miguel Lopez de Leon. Whether at book festivals, conventions, or book signings, I've been asked many times why I chose to deviate from my chosen genre of young adult middle grade fantasy to a dark fantasy novel that is for adult readers only. Part of the reason is that I wanted to create a more graphic and mature story that did not fit into the parameters of those previously mentioned genres. It's funny though, as soon as younger readers see that It Took Billy is for adult readers only, it is immediately the book that they ask their parents to buy for them. Here is the back cover text for It Took Billy. The handwritten journal of a boy named Billy was found in a hollow tree trunk in the woods. The pages from the first half of the notebook had been ripped out. At the time the journal was discovered, Billy had been missing for three months. It Took Billy is a dark fantasy for adult readers. The story centers around the harrowing journey of a teenage boy who is abducted by an ancient demon and thrust into a twisted world full of cruel magic, powerful mystics, and enraged immortals. Left with nothing but his notebook and a pen, Billy chronicles every detail of his terrifying ordeal. This is Billy's journal. Who is this pale ancient demon? Why did it choose him? Why is he still alive? and when will the demon finally kill him. Billy is forced to grapple with his own mortality, his own growing sense of mental instability, and a perspective of the world that he never even knew existed. The themes explored in this book are the sometimes thin line between good and evil, loneliness, how so many feel a desperation to belong, the seductive nature of power, and how the same events can be seen in a multitude of different ways, depending on the perspective and mental filters of the person viewing them. Thank you so much to all of you for coming here today and listening, and thank you so much to Roman's Bookstore, Alta, and to Jennifer, Rira, and everyone who made this local author day possible. Yes. Did you base Billy's character on somebody? What I really wanted for Billy's character was to make him sort of the everyman so that <coughs> the reader could see and experience the story through him. Yes. Are your rituals based in anything that you've discovered in other works or do you, did you invent the whole... For the story? Yeah. Like yes, there's a lot of mythology. I have an excerpt. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Then I heard the unmistakable sound of the sliding doors opening and my heart felt like it was about to explode. But I knew I had to defend Dad. I once again pocketed my phone and dropped the useless flashlight before creeping into the living room, gripping the poker with both hands. The demon was standing in the middle of the room. I wanted to yell at him. I wanted to run over to him and start swinging wildly. I also knew that there were kitchen knives close by and the heavy fire extinguisher could probably be used as a weapon too. But despite thinking all this, all I could do was stare at him. He was so tall and so thin. His eyes were sunken in and his skin was so pale that it was almost bluish. I could feel the cold air coming in from the open sliding doors. The odd smell in the air nauseated me. Glancing at the balcony, the moonlight revealed the carcasses of dozens of dead squirrels on the rickety floor. I don't know if I was hypnotized or in shock, but I couldn't move. The pale man just kept staring at me and then he started whispering incoherently under his breath. I wanted to shout out when I felt something brush against my frozen shoulder. I watched in horror as my dad walked past me. He seemed to still be asleep as he slowly made his way to the terrifying man in the center of the room. Then the monster started whispering louder, and there's no other way to say this. My dad started levitating off the floor. His legs were hanging limply down, and both his arms were sticking straight out on either side of him. I stood there, unable to move or speak, staring at my floating father. Then the demonic man glided up to me, still whispering under his breath. When he reached me, he started yelling in a high-pitched shriek. 
I could see his blackened teeth and smell his rotten breath. Seconds later, he reached out and grabbed my forehead with his hand. The last thing I remember was his touch. For some reason, I thought it would be ice cold, but instead it was hot, like a furnace, like he was burning my skin. Then I woke up in this cave. All right, thank you so much for joining us for Local Author Day.